So I'm going to show you the correct order to do every single quest through the entirety of Elden Ring so you can complete every single one and not miss anything. We're going to go step by step, so this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but buckle up, this is going to be the only guide that you need, so let's go ahead and jump into Limgrave. You'll start out by interacting with the first NPC that you see, and that's Varus. You're going to exhaust all of his dialogue, and then after that you're going to head over to the east to Murkwater Cave. Once there you'll be invaded by a bloody finger, and Yura's going to be summoned to help you, and then you're going to help him kill that bloody finger. After you kill him, you'll head into the actual Murkwater Cave, and you're going to meet and fight Patches, but do not kill him. After you get him down to half health, he'll start begging for his life, and then you can exhaust all of his dialogue and leave Murkwater Cave. You're going to head north up the river, until you get to an outcropping of stone and Euro will be underneath. Exhaust his dialogue, he's going to introduce himself to you and explain a little bit about what he's about, and then you can leave Euro. After this, you'll rest at a site of grace and meet Melina. You'll then head back to the Church of Ella at night, and you're going to meet Ronnie, where she'll give you the wolves and the spirit called Bell. You're then going to head to this location on the map, and you're going to find Bach disguised as a tree. You need to hit the tree, and then you can go through all of his dialogue. He'll give you a mushroom, and we can move on to the next part. You're then going to head to the coastal cave, where you will find Bach once again, laying on the ground. Talk to him and exhaust all of his dialogue and then venture farther into the cave to kill the boss. You'll find tailoring tools and a tailoring needle after you're defeating the boss and then head back to the beginning. Head back to the beginning of the dungeon and then you're going to go ahead and give Bach the sewing needle. Exhaust all of his dialogue and then we're going to go over to Waypoint Ruins and meet Selen right here on the map. Selen will be guarded by a pumpkin head knight, but after you defeat him, you can head through the door and talk to her and tell her that you want to learn sorcery. Exhaust all of her dialogue, and then we can leave this location. Our next matter of business is going to meet Rodrika at Stormhill Shacks. So you're going to head north up the road to Limgrave, and then Stormhill Shack will be right here on your right. Once you get there, hop off, and Rodrika will be sitting inside of the shack. Talk to her and exhaust all of her dialogue, at which point you will get the jellyfish summon. You'll then head all the way east towards the Saints Bridge, and up on the hillside you're gonna find Alexander buried in the ground. Give him a few swift hits to the back and he'll come flying out, exhaust all of his dialogue, and then we can move on to the next location. We'll then move past the Saints Bridge and continue east, and we'll find D standing on the side of the road. You need to talk to D, and then he's gonna tell you about Summon Water Village. You'll then head down to Summon Water Village and kill the Mariner that's there and return to D. D will have moved into the village, so he'll be standing right here by a death root, and you can exhaust all of his dialogue. He'll ask if you want an introduction to Garonk the Beast clergyman, accept his invitation, but we won't head there yet. We're then going to head directly south from Summon Water Village to this stone outcropping here. We're going to go talk to Kenneth Height, and he's going to give us a quest. Kenneth Height is going to tell us to go take back his Fort Height down through the Mistwood in the southern tip of Limgrave. However, before we do that, we need to head up to the Third Church of America and go through the portal that D marked for us. The reason we're heading here is because we need to go find Garonk the Beast clergyman to at least start his quest line. Once you go through the portal, you'll end up at the Beastal Sanctum, grab the Site of Grace, and then you're going to talk to Garonk. You're going to have the option to give him the death root from the Summon Water Village, at which point he's going to task you with bringing him more death root, and he'll give you the claw mark seal and the beast eye. You're then going to rest at the Beastal Sanctum Site of Grace, and if you haven't already, you'll get an option to go to Round Table Hold. Once you've arrived at Round Table Hold, you need to exhaust every single NPC's dialogue, starting with Corrin's. You then head over to Dialos, and he'll ask you if he's seen his servant. You can then head over to Gideon and exhaust all of his dialogue as well. And then you'll run over to Fia, and she will ask to hold you. Go ahead and be held by her, and exhaust her dialogue. You'll receive the Baldekin's blessing, and then head back out the door and talk to Hugh. He'll have a few different sets of dialogue that you can go through, just make sure you get through every single one. And then we're going to head back to the First Church of Ella and talk to Kale. As you're talking to him, you're going to to ask about the howling in the Mistwood. You're then going to exhaust his dialogue, and he's going to give you the finger snap gesture. We then need to head down to the Mistwood and find Blythe. He's going to be on the top of one of the towers of those ruins. Go up to the bottom of the tower and use the finger snap gesture so you can get him down and start a conversation with him. He's going to tell you that he's looking for a particular knight, and he wants you to kill him in order to give you ample reward. But before we do that, we're going to go down to Fort Height and clear it for Kenneth Height. When you arrive, there's going to be soldiers all around. Clear out the soldiers on the outside as well as on the inside of the keep, and make your way up the stairs until you find a Knight of Godric. Kill that knight and you'll be awarded the Bloody Slash Ash of War. And while you're here, go ahead and climb the ladder and grab the Dectus Medallion. Next, you're going to head to the Forlorn Hound Everjail and kill Darwell in the jail. And once you've defeated him, you can then talk to Blythe and exhaust all his dialogue. You'll be rewarded with your first Somber Smithing Stone 2. 
And at this point, we're going to head back to Kenneth Height and tell him that his fort is secure. Once you get to him, you're going to exhaust all of his dialogue and he will give you the Erd Steel Dagger. Keep talking to him and he's going to ask if you would like to pledge your services to him. Just say yes and we can move on to the next portion. We'll then head back to Fort Height because we're not done with Kenneth yet and you need to make your way all the way back up to the top of his fort where the knight was. Once there, he's going to tell you he doesn't have the authority to make you a knight, so he is looking for another ruler for Limgrave that isn't Godric. But before we figure out who that ruler is gonna be, we need to head south into Weeping Peninsula, where just over the bridge, we are gonna meet Irina for the first time. Exhaust all of her dialogue, and she's gonna tell you about a rebellion that happened down in Castle Morn, and she's gonna give you a letter to give to her father. So at this point, we're gonna head south into Castle Morn, and you're gonna make your way through the castle until you find her father on one of the highest ramparts of the castle. Talk to him exhausting his dialogue, and deliver the letter that Irina gave to him. He'll tell you he can't leave until the boss of the castle is defeated. At this point, head behind the castle, and you're gonna defeat the lion misbegotten boss that's out there on the beach. And at that point, you can return to Edgar and talk to him once more. He'll give you his thanks and tell you he's no longer bound by duty, and he's gonna head up to where Irina was last seen. After exhausting all of his dialogue, we can also head back to Irina. However, we're gonna find the scene a little bit different than when we left it. When we come back to Irina, we're going to find Edgar wallowing in despair as his slain daughter is laying there against the wall. We need to exhaust all of his dialogue, and he's gonna tell us that he is gonna swear vengeance on whoever did this, and that is where his questline is gonna end for now. We're now gonna head into Storm castle and defeat Margaret so we can start dealing with all the NPCs that are there. The first NPC you're going to meet in Stormvale Castle is going to be Gustak. He's going to be to the left side of the Stormvale main gate site of Grace and you need to exhaust all of his dialogue and he's going to tell you to go around instead of through the main gate of Stormvale Castle. Agree and then continue to make your way through the castle. Make your way to the Rampart Tower site of Grace and just beyond that you're going to find a church and jump into a hole within one of the towers. Turn to the right and immediately you're going to see Roger. Walk up to him and exhaust all of his dialogue and tell him you're there to kill Godric the Grafted. After that, you can continue to talk to him and you will have the ability to buy a few sorceries from him. After discussing a few things with Roger, we're then going to make our way through the castle in order to find this pile of corpses right here surrounded by a bunch of dogs. The reason being is we need to snag a item for Rodrika. This item is going to be the Chrysalid's Memento, which we will need for her questline. We're then going to need to make our way into the bottom of Stormvale Castle where we need to find Roger's Bloodstain. You are going to have to fight a ulcerated tree spirit here so just be careful of that but after that walk over to the corner of the room and you can find his blood stain where it appears he has been killed by death blight you're now going to head back to the stormhill shack and give the memento to rodrika exhaust all of her dialogue and then she will make her way to round table hold at this point we're going to go find one of my all-time favorite npcs and that's nefeli lu head back to the lift side chamber site of grace and you're going to make your way up past the flying birds and then on the right side you'll find a little alcove room where there is a woman talking to a dead knight on the ground. Exhaust all of Nefeli Lu's dialogue, and then we can continue on into the castle. And just a side note here as I'm editing all this, make sure you kill the birds and the guys right there that I ran past, because if you don't, they will follow you into this room, and they have a danger of killing Nefeli, which would ruin this entire video. So make sure you kill them. As we leave Nefeli, we're going to go head up to the secluded cell site of Grace, and right next to that site of Grace is going to be Nefeli's summon sign. Summon her and go into the boss room and kill Godric the Grafted. After defeating Godric the Grafted, you need to head back to Roundtable Hold and exhaust all dialogue with Roger, Enya, Gideon, and Nefeli. You'll then talk back and forth between Rodrika and Hugh several times in order for her to be taken as his apprentice. She will tell you that she's looking for her purpose, and he's going to tell you that that's an absolutely crazy idea for him to take her as an apprentice. Keep talking to Rodrika and Hugh until you get the option from Rodrika to tell her what the blacksmith said. Exhaust all of her dialogue and then head back to Hugh. You'll then ask Hugh about Rodrika, and then you'll ask him to watch over her. Keep talking to him until you get the it's what she wants dialogue, and then select that option. Head back to Rodrika, and then after you talk to her, rest at the site of Grace, and then she should take her place over to where she sells spirit summons next to Hugh. This next part is completely optional, but at this point you can head back to Stormvale Castle, go back to where you found the memento for Rodrika, and there should be the Crimson Hood there for you. Now from the Godric the Grafted site of Grace, you're going to continue through Stormvale Castle like you're going into Lyurnia of the Lakes. However, before you get all the way through, you need to jump off the ledge or go down the ladder and turn around and grab the Shabriri Grape because you're going to need it in just a minute. From that grape, you're going to continue directly out into Lyurnia of the Lakes, where you will then run into Hyeta. You'll speak to her and exhaust all of her dialogue, and at which point you can give her a Shabriri grape. You receive the Azuous Gesture, and then you can exhaust all of her dialogue and move on. You'll then head to the Church of Irith, where you're going to find Thops right here sitting on a bench. 
exhaust all of his dialogue and talk to him, giving him some runes, and he's going to tell you about Raya Lucaria Academy. He's also going to tell you that he can't get into the Academy without an Academy key. You can then ask him about the Glintstone key and about Selen, and you'll want to exhaust both of those options. After speaking through all of his dialogue, you'll then head directly into the middle of Liernia of the Lakes for our next NPC interaction. You'll find Raya the Scout right by a small telescope on the map in a small pavilion. Exhaust all of her dialogue and she's going to ask you to hear her request, in which case you're going to have to go retrieve a necklace that is very precious to her. You'll then head northwest of her location to the Boil Prawn Shack, where you're going to have to confront Bogart. He's not super excited to see you, but you can ask him to give you the necklace, and he'll tell you to buy it from him. For 1,000 runes, you can buy the necklace, and then make your way back to Raya to return her her trinket. After you give her her necklace, she's going to then explain to you who she is, and exhausting all of her dialogue will allow you to receive the Volcano Manor invitation. She'll then tell you to meet her in the plateaus of the Erd Tree, and we can continue on our way. We're now going to head directly west into the village of the Albanarks to find Nefeli Lu. You'll find her under a bridge outcropping, and she's absolutely mortified at the atrocities that have taken place here in the village of the Albanarks. Exhaust all of Nefeli's dialogue, and then run up and over across the bridge to kill the Omen Killer mini-boss that's in this area. After he's dead, go back across the bridge and hit the pot in order to talk to Albus to get the right side of the Halligtree secret medallion. We then need to head to the Lakeside Crystal Cave in order to find Latena at the very end of the dungeon. Defeat the boss there and go through all of Latena's dialogue until she gives you the medallion and becomes a spirit ash. You're then going to head to the purified ruins where you're going to find a staircase located under some boards. Run down underneath and in this area you're going to find a shabriri grape. You're going to need it to talk to Hyetta in just a minute. Once you've received the grape you're going to head back down the hill to the first set of ruins and Hyetta is going to be standing against the wall. You're going to talk to Hyetta and she's going to ask for a shabriri grape and you are going to give her the one you just found. After you give her the grape she will be pleased and you can leave her there. We're then going to head northeast to the Rose Church where we will find Vare for the second time. Once you exhaust the majority of Vare's dialogue, he's going to give you a Festering Bloody Finger. He's going to want you to use the Festering Bloody Finger three times to perform invasions. After that, he will then move on to the next portion of his particular questline. We're then going to head west to the Revenger's Shack in order to have Edgar invade us, and after we kill him, he's going to drop for us a Shabriri Grape. After defeating Edgar, you're going to head northwest of the Academy Gate Town site of Grace, where you will find Dialos. Exhaust all of his dialogue, and then you can move on to the next portion of our quest. We're then going to take the Shabriri Grape that we got from Edgar and take it to the Gate Town Bridge site of Grace because right there, Hyetta is going to be located near a cliffside. You're going to need to exhaust all of her dialogue, giving her a Shabriri Grape, and she will ask what they actually are. Once she finds out their eyes, she's going to get sick, and then you need to leave her alone to rest at the site of Grace. After resting at the site of Grace, you can return to Hyetta for some more dialogue, and then you can move on. You'll then need to head up to the Church of Vows in East Liernia and locate the gold sewing needle because we're going to need it in a minute. After you grab the needle, you can then head back to Roundtable Hold. Once at Roundtable Hold, you're going to only need to talk to Fia. While you're talking to Fia and exhausting her dialogue, you will have the option to talk in secret. Choose that option and exhaust every dialogue option afterwards. Fia will tell you about a black knife print and she will give you a knife print clue. This is the location of the black knife catacombs, which we're going to have to go to next. The black knife catacombs is located in northeastern Liernia of the lakes and you're going to have to make your way through that dungeon until you get to an illusionary wall. Hit that wall and there's going to be a secret black knife boss who's going to drop the black knife print for you. Before you leave this dungeon you need to defeat the boss in order to get the death root that's located at the end because you'll need to give this to Garonk the beast clergyman at some point. After you get the death root and the black knife print you can head back to round table hold and speak to Roger. He will be very interested in the black knife print and you will need to exhaust all of his dialogue and give it to him before before heading into the other room to talk to Fia. You're then going to go talk to Fia and exhaust all of her dialogue and she's going to ask you about Roger. You're then going to leave Fia's room and you're going to head directly to the right out of the door and Nefeli is going to be downstairs in the basement. Please. Exhaust all of her dialogue and then you're going to need to go up and talk to Gideon about Nefeli. You're going to ask Gideon about Nefeli's despair and he's going to explain what's happening. After exhausting Gideon's dialogue about Nefeli, you're then going to head all the way to the northwest of Liernia of the Lakes to the four belfries. Once you get to the very top 
where the site of grace is that first tower is going to have your imbued stone sword key follow the road down to this tower right here and you're going to use that key to get to the chapel of anticipation once you've made it to the chapel you're going to have to take on a grafted scion and then follow the path up to the chapel and you'll be able to find the stormhawk ashes located right here in this chest after you get the stormhawk king ashes you can go back to nefeli Upon returning to Round Table Hold, Nefeli is still going to be in the same spot you left her in the basement. Talk to her and exhaust all of her dialogue and tell her you heard from Gideon. Exhaust her dialogue fully and you should get the option to give her the Stormhawk King. After exhausting the remainder of her dialogue, you want to head upstairs and talk to Dialos and exhaust his as well. He'll talk to you a little bit about Volcano Manor, but nothing more than that. At this point, you're going to leave Round Table Hold and head into Raya Lucaria Academy. You're looking for Yura here, so once you get into the Academy main gate, you're gonna head to the right and you're gonna find a red summon sign. Get summoned into Yura's world because you're going to fight a Bloody Finger. After you've killed the Bloody Finger, you're then gonna return to your world and you'll have the option to talk to Yura. He'll then tell you about Eleonora, one of the worst bloody fingers, but that's pretty much all the information we get from him for now. At this point, we're going to need to venture into Raya Lucaria Academy, and we need to get an extra Academy key for Throps. Now, this part can be a little bit confusing, so I'm just going to leave the route right here for you guys to follow sped up so you know exactly where to go and how to get this Academy key. Once you get into the church, you're going to climb onto the rafters through the window and you'll look down and you'll see an item on top of one of the chandeliers. Jump down onto that chandelier very carefully and you'll receive an Academy Glenstone Key. We're then going to return to the lake facing cliff site of grace and you're going to run down here to the church and talk to Thops. You'll have the opportunity to give him the Glenstone Key, go ahead and do that, and then rest at the site of Grace and come back and there's going to be a Teardrop Scarab where Thops was. After killing the Scarab, you're going to be rewarded with Thops Barrier. The next area we're going to need to find him is going to be by the Schoolhouse Classroom site of Grace in Raya Lucaria. Run out of the room and turn the corner and Thops is going to be dead against his desk. You can loot his bell bearing and a few other odds and ends from his corpse. At this point in our questing journey, you can defeat Renala and then we're we're going to move on to the next aspect of the quest, which is located at the East Raya Lucaria Gate site of Grace. You need to locate this Grace and then rest at it, and Bach will show up right behind you. Exhaust all of his dialogue, and you can have him alter your garments for free. You're then going to go from the East Raya Lucaria Gate right over here to Bellum Church because we need to talk to Hyetta. She's going to ask for a Shabriri Grape, which is going to cause us to go all the way over to this side of the map, and we're going to fight Festering Finger Vike. He will drop for you the Shabriri Grape that she needs, and then we can return back to her, allowing her to eat the Shabriri Grape. We're then going to head back to the East Raya Lucaria Gate, where we left Bach, but when we sit at the site of Grace, we're going to have the option to talk to Melina. She's going to explain that Bach wants to talk to you and always enjoys when you return, so every single time that we encounter Bach near Site of Grace, we need to speak to him and exhaust all of his dialogue, but we'll get into that in just a minute. We're then going to head all the way to the West in Liurnia, and we're going to talk to EG, exhaust all of his dialogue, and then we're going to move farther north into the manor. You need to fight your way through the entire manor, killing Loretta at the end, and then go through to the Three Sisters Towers because you need to meet Ronnie for the first time. She'll be located in Ronnie's Rise right here on the map, and you need to exhaust all of her dialogue and agree to serve her. Once you've come to an agreement, she's going to tell you to go downstairs in Ronnie's Rise and talk to EG, Celibus, and Blythe as their spectral forms. Exhaust all their dialogue and then return back to Ronnie. She won't have anything new for you yet, so we're going to head down the hill and meet with Celibus in his tower. He's going to allow us to become part of his scheme, and we're going to go ahead and take his potion. Now, you are going to have a few options here with the potion, but for the sake of this video and doing every single quest line in order, we are just going to give the potion to Gideon so nothing happens at all, and we can still do the rest of Nefeli's quest line, the Dung Eater's quest line, and Celibus's quest line without anything turning into shambles. You're then going to head to the the Schieffer River well inside of Limgrave and take the lift down. We need to go through the Schieffer River and find Blythe in order to exhaust all of his dialogue and continue his quest line. You'll find Blythe on the far east side of the Schieffer River on top of one of the cliff sides and he is going to talk to you a little bit about Selvis. He tells you to leave the Schieffer River to him so you can go on to the next portion of the quest. And speaking of the quest, we need to head back to the Three Sisters in Liurnia and talk to Selvis once more. He's then going to give us an introduction letter to Selen and it 
which point we will head back to the Waypoint Ruins in Limgrave and start talking to her to exhaust all of her dialogue. She explains how the Carrion family and Ronnie's fates are tied to the stars, and the only way to get the stars to move again is to kill Radon. But we're not gonna leave Limgrave yet, because we have to go back down to the Shifra River and talk to Blythe once more. And he's gonna talk to you a little bit about a festival that's located in Kaled where you can fight Radon. He says that he's gonna make his way there, which leads us into our next portion of these quests. We too are gonna be headed into Kaled, however, we're gonna go talk to the old man Gallery in Gallery Shack, located right here on the map. He wants your help with a girl named Millicent, but first and foremost, we need to find the gold needle for him that's located in the Swamp of Aeonia. However, in order to find this needle, we need to defeat Commander O'Neill and get the unalloyed gold needle from him, so we can then bring it back to Gallery and exhaust all of his dialogue. In return, he'll give you the secret of Celia, as well as ask for some more time with the gold needle, so all you need to do is rest at any side of Grace and then run back to him and the needle will be complete and you can take it from him. We're now going to take the gold needle up to Millicent at the Church of Plague located right here on the map and you're going to exhaust all of Millicent's dialogue, give her the needle and then rest at that site of grace and she will now be standing up. You can exhaust all of her dialogue and she'll give you the prosthesis wearer's heirloom, at which point you can rest at the site of grace again and she will be gone. However, now we need to go back to Gallery's shack and talk to Millicent once again. You'll go through all of her dialogue, and she's going to tell you that she's going to start her journey now. And at this point, we need to head into South Kaled in order to defeat Radon at Redmain Castle. You'll take the portal at the impassable Great Bridge site of Grace, and you're going to be able to get into Redmain Castle to start the festival. Once the festival is started, you can head down the lift, and you will fight Radon. Once you've killed Radon, you need to talk to Blythe, exhaust all of his dialogue, and then talk to Alexander who's sorting through some armor in the sand. Make sure all of his dialogue is done, and then you can move on to the next location. At this point, you're going to head back to Redmain Castle and talk to Jiren. He's going to be sitting on a throne, and you'll go through all of his dialogue options, and he's going to tell you that he has another task in mind, and he will leave the castle. We're then going to head back to Lyurnia of the Lakes, and you're going to find Alexander once again, south of the Carrion Study Hall site of Grace, located right here, next to Jarberg. We're going to have to hit him out of a hole, but you are going to need some oil pots to do so, so you're going to head down to the Shifra River and buy them from this merchant right here. You'll come back to Alexander in the Urnia of the Lakes, throw an oil pot on him, and then smack him a few times with your weapon, and he will fly out, and we can move on. We're then going to head directly down these tombstones sticking out the side of the wall and make a journey to Jarberg. We need to exhaust Jar Baron's dialogue, and then after that, we're going to go down into the crater within the Mistwood, and we're going to navigate through through Nokron, finding the Finger Slayer Blade at the very end. Once the Finger Slayer Blade is in hand, we are finally going to reach Altus Plateau. What you need to do here is go up the lift, and once you get up the Grand Lift of Dectus, you will see Raya at the very top of that lift. However, don't speak to her yet, because we are going to come back to her at a later time to do the entire Volcano Manor chain, but for now, you're going to head up to the Erd Tree Gazing Site of Grace and speak to Millicent. Millicent's going to talk to you about trying to get to an area past the Erd Tree where Melania might be, and after you finish talking with her there, you need to go back to Roundtable Hold. Once you reach Roundtable Hold, we're going to exhaust all the dialogue with Corin and with Roger. Roger is then going to give you back the Black Knife print, and he's going to mention that Ronnie orchestrated the Night of the Black Knives. He talks a little bit about her, and then his dialogue will have concluded. We're then going to head into Fia's room and exhaust all of her dialogue, and you will receive the Weather Dagger. After receiving the dagger from Fia, we then need to give the dagger to D and reload Round Table Hold by sitting at the site of Grace. You'll then be able to find Fia in a new opened room right by the blacksmith, and you can exhaust all of her dialogue then, and now we're going to head back to Altus Plateau. You're going to head to the Altus Highway Junction because as seen a few minutes ago, Corin has left Roundtable Hold and is going on his journey to find Gold Masks. So, going to this site of Grace, you're going to find him right outside of it to the north, and you can exhaust all of his dialogue. Once you meet Corin at this location, you can then head down to the Second Church of America and help Yura defeat Eleonora. You'll find Yura wounded on the battlefield within the church, and he will drop for you the Naga Kiba, and if you walk forward a little bit, Eleonora will spawn, and you can battle her there. Once she is killed, you will receive the Purifying Crystal Tear as well as Eleanor's Pole Blade. You're now going to head up to this location on the map in Altus Plateau because we need to find Gold Mask's location. Once we find Gold Mask's location, you can try to talk to him, but he's not going to say anything. And now that we know where he is, we can go back to Corin's original location directly north of the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace 
and we can tell him where Gold Mask is. Corn will be incredibly thankful to you, and you can reload the area by going directly to the Road of Iniquity side path site of Grace, run up to where Gold Mask was, and exhaust all of Corrin's dialogue. At this point, we need to do a little bit of PvP, because as stated a while ago, Varus has given us this bloody finger and needs us to use it in order for him to move on to the next portion of his quest. After engaging in the three invasions, you'll then talk to Varya again and get anointed by him, and after that, he's going to ask you to soak the Lord of Blood favor in the blood of a maiden. You can either do this at the Church of Inhibition, the Chapel of Anticipation after you enter through the four belfries, or you can kill Hayata and that would end her quest. However, considering we want to complete every single NPC's quest line, we're going to go to the Church of Inhibition and use the maiden that's already dead there. You can then return to Vari and give him the Lord of Blood's favor soaked in blood, and at this point we're going to leave here for now and find Dee's brother and give him the twinned armor set. Dee's brother is going to be located in Nakron right here on the map, and the way you get here is start at the Ancestral Woods site of Grace and run all the way through the aqueduct until you can find him right here before you hit the twin gargoyle boss. Once you've dealt with the twin gargoyle bosses, you're then going to take the coffin on the other side of the site of Grace into Deep Root Depths. We need to make our way through this entire area and we need to find Fia, who's going to be located right at the Across the Root site of Grace in this giant boss arena. You'll fight your way through, ask to be held by her, and then talk in secret to exhaust all of her dialogue. She'll tell you all about the Hollow Brand, but nothing really comes of this conversation, so it's now time to head all the way back up into Seathwater Terminus. The goal of going up here is to find Alexander, but before you do, right here on the map, you're going to find a Tibia Mariner you need to slay him in order to get the death root for Garonk. Once you've grabbed the death root, you can keep going up the route through Seathwater Terminus, and you're going to find Alexander after defeating a worm boss in some lava located right here on the map and you can exhaust all of his dialogue, and he will give you the Jar Helm, as well as move on to his next location when his dialogue is complete. You'll then continue up the road through Seathwater Terminus until you get to Azur sitting next to a cliffside. You need to talk to him, and he is going to give you the Comet Azure Sorcery, and at this point we can head all the way back to the Waypoint Ruins in Limgrave and show Selen the Sorcery. You're going to need to exhaust all of Selen's dialogue until she gives you the Cillian Seal Breaker, and at which point you can then head to the Cilia Hideaway Dungeon right here on the map in Kaled, and you need to go find Lusat. You know you're getting close when you run into a sorcerer guarding a seal against the wall, and after you kill the sorcerer, use the Cillian Seal Breaker on that wall, and then you can run in and grab the Star's Ruin from Lasat. You'll then finish out the dungeon and head back to the Waypoint Ruins Cellar Site of Grace, where you're going to find Sorceress Selen, and you can hear her request about finding her actual body located in the Witchbane Ruins, and you can also tell her the location of Lasat exhaust all of her dialogue, and then you're going to head down to Weeping Peninsula, where after you take the staircase under the ground, you are going to find Sorceress Selen shackled to a wall, and you're going to want to exhaust all of her dialogue. Selen will ask you to take her Primal Glenstone, and you will take the Primal Glenstone out of her chest. Once this is completed, you can go ahead and rest at the closest site of Grace, and then come back to the Witchbane Ruins, where you were just talking to Selen. Except now, Jiren is going to be standing there, and you need to talk to him and exhaust all of his dialogue. He'll tell you about his hunt for Selen, and after you've exhausted everything he has to say, you can go ahead and move on to the next location, which is going to be up near Celebus. At this location right outside of Rani's Rise, we're going to find a floor that can be hit and you can walk down a flight of stairs. Once you get down these flight of stairs, you'll find Celebus's workshop, and in the very back of this workshop, through an illusionary wall, we are going to find the Puppet of Selen. We can talk to this puppet and transport the primordial glenstone that Selen gave us into this new body. Selen will tell you she's going to return to Raya Lucaria Academy and expel the Carrion Royal family. You're also going to need to interact with this floor sign here on the ground because you'll need to talk to Selavis about it later. You're then going to make your way right outside of Renala's boss room, and right outside of Renala's boss room, we are going to find two separate summoning signs. The red is going to be to challenge Sorceress Selen, meaning you will team up with Jiren, or if you do the yellow summon sign, you can assist Sorceress Selen in defeating Jiren. And because we're trying to complete every single person's questline in this video, we are going to aid Sorceress Selen. However, if you don't aid Sorceress Selen, you will only get an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone, as opposed to where you do help her kill Jiren, you'll get Jiren's armor and extra spells sold by Selen. After defeating Jiren, you can exhaust all of Selen's dialogue in the middle of the room, and she will give you the Glenstone Chris. 
reload the room, and you will notice that Selen's form has changed and Renala is back in the center, and Selen is just a mass of heads in the corner of the room. You will be able to get her glintstone crown, so that's something awesome, but overall this is a pretty terrible demise for one of the NPCs. And because you activated that summon sign earlier in the cave where Celibus's puppet was, you're now going to have the option to talk to Celibus and ask him about his chambers. You'll exhaust all of his dialogue and then you'll be able to buy a puppet from him. However, in order for him to get to the next part of the quest, you need to buy some sorceries from him, and I'm not sure how many it takes, but I bought all four. And then you can reset the area to Site of Grace and head back to Celibus and talk to him. You can then ask him if he'll give you another puppet, but he's going to require you to go out into the Lands Between and find some Starlight Shards. You can find one right here in Weeping Peninsula, and you can also find one down here within Southern Limgrave next to the Agil Lake South Site of Grace. After gathering your Starlight Shards, you'll then have the option to buy the second puppet from Celibus. I then had to stop talking to him and then start talking to him again, and he will now have the About the Scheme option within his dialogue. He's going to explain his scheme about trying to make Ronnie into his own puppet, but in order to do so, he's going to need you to go to Altus Plateau, located right here on the map, and get an Amber Starlight Shard. Once you obtain this Starlight Shard, you can then return to Celibus, and he will give you the Magic Scorpion Charm Talisman, one of the best talismans in the game. Now at this point, there are two very important options you can do. You can rest the side of Grace and then come back to Celibus and get his potion that he wants you to give to Ronnie. But if you give her that potion, it will fail you out of her quest line. So instead, we are going to go up to Ronnie and give the Finger Slayer Blade to her, and this will kill Celibus. However, she will give you the Carrion Inverted Statue, which is the item you're going to need to complete the rest of her quest line. We're then going to head south of the manor to the road to the manor site of Grace, and we need to talk to War Counselor E.G. Once you've exhausted all of his dialogue, you're then going to go find Blythe in the Forlorn Hound Everjail. You're then going to free him from the Everjail and exhaust all of his dialogue. He's not going to be sure what's happened to him, but he is going to go searching for Mistress Ronnie. After we free him, we need to return to E.G. and exhaust his dialogue, and then we will head down to the Carrion Study Hall and use the inverted Carrion statue that Ronnie gave us. You're going to make your way through this entire area, only to get up to the Divine Tower and find Ronnie's corpse. On her corpse, you are going to find the Curse Mark of Death, which is the whole reason we came here to begin with. You're then going to head back to Deep Root Depths, and you will be embraced by Fia once more. You will have the ability to give her the Curse Mark of Death, which you should do. You'll then reload the area by sitting at the Site of Grace next to Fia, and then exhaust all of her dialogue once more. Reload the area by sitting at the Site of Grace, and then you'll have the opportunity to touch Fia. You need to touch Fia and enter the Deathbed Dream, and you will have the opportunity to defeat Lich Dragon Fortisax. Once you defeat him and gather his Remembrance, it will then take you out of the Deathbed Dream automatically, and you will have the opportunity to receive the Mending Rune. You can grab the Mending Rune and reset the area at the Site of Grace, and then Dee's brother will be there, holding his sword up high, and you can exhaust all of his dialogue. Before we leave, you can reset the area one more time and head back over to where Dee's brother was and pick up the items, Inseparable Sword, and the entire Twinned Armor set. And at this point, we can leave Deep Root Depths. You're going to head through the way gate right in front of you, and this will dump you out right on the outskirts of the capital. However, we're not going to head into the capital yet because we need to head over to the west and go into Rena's Rise. Rena's Rise is the third tower located right here on the map, and you'll climb up the tower, and inside of a chest is going to be Ronnie's attire, and you can climb to the very top where there's going to be a waygate. You need to head into that waygate, and that will dump you out at the Einsel River, where there will be an item directly in front of you. This is going to be the miniature Ronnie. Go ahead and pick this up, and then run down the river, and there's going to be a Site of Grace. At this Site of Grace, you are going to have the opportunity to talk to the doll and talk to Ronnie three times, and finally she will answer you. Make sure all of her dialogue is exhausted, and she's going to ask you to destroy the Baleful Shadow. You're going to make your way through the rest of the Iron Soul River until you get to the next Site of Grace, and you'll be able to talk to Ronnie once more. You'll sit at the Noxtella Eternal City Site of Grace and exhaust all of Ronnie's dialogue. At this point, you're going to make your way through the ground level of Noxtella until you get to a lift at the very end. Once you get to the lift, take it down, and there you are going to get one more Site of Grace, where you can once again exhaust all of Ronnie's dialogue. After you exhaust all of her dialogue, run directly straight in front of you, and you will fight and defeat the Baleful Shadow. This will allow you to get the discarded palace key, and you can then take this back to Raya Lucaria, where you can now open the chest located right next to Renala. However, before you do make the journey back to Raya Lucaria, make sure to go down the lift and grab the Site of Grace right here at the Lake of Rot. 
Once you reach the Raya Lucaria Academy, directly to the left of Ranala is going to be a chest. Go ahead and open up this chest using the discarded palace key, and there you will find the Dark Moon Ring. Now that we've snagged the ring, we need to head back to the Lake of Rot site of Grace, and you need to make your way through that entire area. I am going to leave the route that I'm taking right here on the screen. I'm going to speed everything up for you so you can see how it goes super quickly, and at the very, very end, we're going to end up going into the coffin right here by the Grand Cloister. Once you go through this coffin, it will dump you out at Estelle, and you need to beat Estelle. Estelle is one of the harder boss fights of the game, especially if you are a melee build, so just take note of that. Once you defeat Estelle, you're going to walk to the other side of the room, where you will see an opening that you can now go through. Go ahead and head up this opening, and it will take us to the next area, where our quest with Ronnie will continue. The lift is going to take you to the Moonlight Altar, and you're going to want to walk towards these ruins. There will be a dragon fight, but it is completely optional, and you can run directly past it if you so choose. But we're not quitters here, so after you kill the dragon, you're going to run into the ruins, and you're going to see a ton of starlight shards all around. You can pick these up as you go, they're just a nice little reward for being here, and then grab the Sight of Grace and jump down the big hole that's in the ground. Make your way down through this hole, and the tunnel will lead you directly to Ronnie sitting on top of the slain two fingers. Approach the Ronnie doll, and you will get one of the best cutscenes in the entire game. Once the cutscene's over, Ronnie will appear and you can exhaust all of her dialogue. At the end of this entire questline, you receive the Dark Moon Greatsword as she leaves this area. At this point, we're going to head back to Ronnie's Rise and commit one of the saddest acts in all of Elden Ring. We need to go and kill Blythe. This is a really awesome fight, and I love the lore implications here, but after you kill Blythe, we are going to go up to Ronnie's chambers and rest and talk to the mini Ronnie. As soon as all this is done, Ronnie's questline is now complete, and we are going to go speak to Raya, who is sitting right on top of the Grand Lift of Dectus, in order to reach Volcano Manor. As you approach Raya, you're going to exhaust all of her dialogue, and then she's going to ask you to come with her to Volcano Manor. You can take Raya's hand, and she will take you directly to the manor. The first thing you want to do when you get to the manor is talk to Tanith and exhaust all of her dialogue. After you've exhausted her dialogue and got the drawing room key, you're going to head into the drawing room and go ahead and exhaust all of Dialysis' dialogue. After exhausting his dialogue, you can pick up the letter on the table and then head out and assassinate Old Knight Esteban in Stormhill, located right here on the map. Once you've assassinated Esteban, you can then head back to Tanith and Volcano Manor and receive another letter of assassination. Go ahead and talk to Raya if you have not, and after you talk to her, you can reload the area at the site of Grace, and she will be in a different room altogether. You can run back down the hall and she will be on the right side in her snake form. You can exhaust all of her dialogue, find out that she is the daughter of Tanith, and she will ask you to keep this secret safe between the three of you. Once you finish talking to her, you can then leave this area and head out to Altus Plateau, where you will assassinate Raleigh the Idol at this location. After his assassination, you will continue forward and head into the Shaded Castle. There's a few items that we need to get here, but the main item is going to be the Valkyrie's Prosthesis, located on the left side of the castle. It will be guarded by a clean rot knight, so just be careful of that, but after after you dispatch of him, you can open up the chest and get this prosthesis. You'll then return to Millicent at the Erd Tree Gazing Hill site of Grace and give her the prosthesis and exhaust all of her dialogue. However, before we head back to Volcano Manor, we need to go back and see Bach the Seamster where we left him in the Urnia of the Lakes. There is something you need to do here, and that is give him the Golden Sewing Needle. However, in order to do that, you need to have killed Radon and buy his garments from Enya in Roundtable Hold. Once you've done this, you can come back to Bach, give him the gold sewing needle by exhausting all of his dialogue, and then he will finally move on to his next portion of his quest. At this point, we can head back to Volcano Manor and talk to Tanith and receive the Serpent Bone Blade for our last letter completion. While we're in the manor, we need to exhaust a ton of dialogue with a ton of different NPCs, so you're going to run down the hall and talk to Zariah, who will then be in her human form and exhaust all of her dialogue. You'll then grab the letter in the next room across the hall and speak 
speak to Bernal. It should be noted here that every single time you fulfill a letter, you need to talk to Bernal and exhaust all of his dialogue. Eventually, after the second letter is complete, you will receive an item from Bernal, the letter to Bernal. After you receive the letter from Bernal, you can then rest at the site of Grace and walk up to Patches, and he will also give you a letter. With both letters in hand, you are going to notice two separate new marks on your map. The first is from Bernal, and it's going to be located in the capital, which we haven't been to yet. And the second is going to be from Patches, which is going to be Targoth right here on the map. In order to get to the ruin strewn precipice, we're going to head to the Bellum Church and run down the side of the hill all the way until we get to this small dungeon down here. You're going to make your way through the entire dungeon, and then you are going to defeat Targoth at the very, very end, fulfilling the letter you received from Patches. And just something to note here as I'm editing all this up, you do actually have to kill the dragon before the summon sign will even appear. After you kill the dragon, you can rest at that side of grace, and then right behind it is going to be a summon sign on the ground that you can go into Targoth's world and defeat him. Upon defeating Targoth, you will be rewarded with the entire Bull Goat set, which is one of the best armor sets in the entire game. Upon returning to Volcano Manor, you're going to go back to Patches and say that the request has been done. He's going to ask you if you've hunted down Targoth, and then he says he's going to give Tanith the news. Okay, I am kicking myself because I neglected a very important part of this questline after you give him the news that Targoth is dead rest of the site of grace and come back to him to get the candlestick whip it is a super awesome weapon you definitely want to pick this up do not miss this portion of the quest like i did at this point we need to head through volcano manor naturally and fight the godskin apostle at the very very end after you defeat him you will be able to grab the item that we need which is going to be the serpent's amnia this is going to be used for zoraya's quest line which we're going to go to now you're going to start talking to zoraya and you're going to tell her the dark side of volcano manor after that, you're going to have the option to give her the Serpent's Amnion, which we just found after fighting the Godskin Apostle. She thanks you for all of your hard work, and then we can go ahead and leave her here. You're now going to sit at a site of Grace in Volcano Manor and run back to Zariah's spot, and you're going to find that she's no longer there. We now need to go confront Tanith and ask her about Zariah's absence. Through exhausting all of her dialogue, you're going to get the Tonic of Forgetfulness, which she is asking you to give to Zariah if you find her in your travels. So for this next part, I'm just going to show you the route instead of explaining everything to do, and I'm going to speed it up a little bit just so it's easier for you guys to follow along. So let's go ahead and see where Zariah is. So as we're running the route, I'm going to go ahead and tell you exactly what happens when you find Zariah. You're going to have three separate options, the first of which is she is going to ask you to kill her, and you can grant that request, and she will drop the talisman that she has for this quest line or you can leave her alone and come back to her after killing Rykard and she will be gone but her talisman will be there as well as Zariah's letter. The third option is you can give her the tonic of forgetfulness and after you kill Rykard and the manor inhabitants have left the building she will return to her original spot and you can reload that area and find her talisman. But because the letter and the talisman are the most ethical rewards for this quest line, we are going to do that. So at this point, after you find her, you can talk to her and exhaust all of her dialogue, but don't give her the tonic of forgetfulness because we will come back to this point at a later time. We're now going to head for a place that is much greener, and that is going to be Jarberg in Liurnia of the Lakes. Once we reach this area, we need to exhaust all of Jarbaran's dialogue as well as Dialos. Jarbaran is going to be in his normal location, so you just need to go up to him and talk to him and hear everything he has to say. Jarbaran is going to ask us to pick a ton of flowers within Jarberg, and then we're going to go do that and come back to him. Reset the area at the site of Grace, and then head back to Jarbaran to see what else he has to say. He's going to talk to you about Alexander, and you can continue to talk to him until he starts repeating dialogue, and then reset the area once more and talk to him again. At this point, Jarbaran is going to talk to you about poachers and how he thinks the village here is safe. Once you finish this third reset, you can go back and reset the area once more and continue talking to Jarbaran. At this point, you will find Jarbaran sleeping, and he's going to be having a nightmare about the poachers. Head back to the site of Grace once more and reset the area. After resetting the area, you will see that Jarbaran is no longer asleep. However, he will not have any more new dialogue, so we can leave him here for now. If you can't get Dialos to get to Jarberg, head back to Volcano Manor at this point and make sure to exhaust all of his dialogue. Then, come back to Jarberg, and after you've reset the site of Grace, you can then talk to Jar Baran again, and he will tell you that Dialos has arrived. After you finish talking to Jar Baran, you can then head right down into the center of town, and Dialos is going to be in this broken down shed. He'll tell you that he's looking after the jars now, and you can exhaust all of his dialogue, and then we need to head up into the northern part of Altus Plateau, 
where we will head to the Windmill Village and defeat the Godskin Apostle that's there. And just as an aside, you do have an option to summon Millicent before the fight as well. After you defeat the Godskin Apostle, you need to rest at that site of grace and Millicent will appear so you can exhaust all of her dialogue. You're now going to leave Millicent at Windmill Heights and we're going to head back to the Boil Prawn Shack. You need to exhaust all of Bogart's dialogue and buy at least one shrimp from him. After you do that, you can then rest at the site of Grace and you will find that he is gone. We're then going to move all the way up to the Draconic Tree Sentinel right here on the map in Altus Plateau and you need to defeat that Tree Sentinel. It is very cool here as well, I didn't know this, but you can actually summon in Millicent to help you with this fight. After you defeat the Draconic Tree Sentinel, rest at the site of Grace, and then run down here on the map to this location where you will find Bogart roasting some crabs. You're going to have the ability to discuss the Dung Eater with him and you need to exhaust every single dialogue option he has. After you've exhausted all dialogue, go ahead and buy some crab from him, and then we can enter Lindell, the royal capital. Our first manner of business in the capital is to find a seedbed curse. This is very close to the beginning of the site of grace that you start out at, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the route right here so you can see exactly for yourself where this first seedbed curse is. We're going to need to grab this curse because it's one of five. We will need to continue the Dung Eater's quest line, so we'll grab it and save it for later. After receiving your first seedbed curse, we are going to head back to Roundtable Hold in order to speak to Dung Eater within the back room. Exhaust all of his dialogue and he will notice that you have a seedbed curse with you. He'll ask you to go unshackle his corpse underneath the capital and give you the sewer jail key. We're then going to head back to the capital, but we're not going to deal with Dung Eater yet because we need to go do the invasion for Burnall. You're going to head back into the old round table hold area and there's going to be a summon sign located right here on the ground. Go ahead and invade with Burnall and you're going to fight two bloody fingers. After you kill them, you can then head back to Volcano Manor and exhaust all of Bernal's dialogue. After exhausting his dialogue, you'll get Gelmir's Fury, and that will be the end of Bernal's questline for right now. We're then going to head back to the capital, but go to the Avenue Balcony site of Grace. We need to head to the Subterranean Shunning Grounds in order to get Dung Eater freed from his cell. I'm going to show you the route and how to get there right now in case you don't know, so I'll go ahead and speed it up for you. Once you've reached the site of Grace, it's only a little bit farther until we run into the Dung Eater. I'll go ahead and show you the route, and then once you talk to him, you can exhaust all of his dialogue and tell him to leave his jail. We're then going to need to head back to Round Table Hold to where Dung Eater used to be and find his message on the ground and read it. Once you've read the message, we can then head back to the Lindell Moat where Bogar is and talk to him and exhaust all of his dialogue as well. You're going to ask him about the Dung Eater and he's going to tell you that he's seen him around. You're then going to reload the area at the closest site of Grace and come back to Bogar, but this time he's going to be far worse off. He'll be sitting in a chair and it looks like he's been defiled by the Dung Eater, so we need to exhaust all of his dialogue. After you've exhausted his dialogue, you can pick up the seed bed curse, his bell bearing, as well as the iron ball and the blackguard's iron mask. You'll then be invaded by the dung eater and you'll have to defeat him. Upon dung eater's defeat, you'll get the sword of Milos and then you can head back to round table hold and exhaust the dung eater's dialogue there. The dung eater is going to ask you to defile his flesh with the seedbed curses, so we are going to have to find five in total in order to do so. We have already found two, and the last three are going to be located towards the end of the game. One is in Volcano Manor, and the other two are going to be within the Halig Tree. The dung eater will then ask you to go down to his jail and defile his corpse with the seedbed curse. So after we get all five, we will come back to the subterranean shunning grounds and do so. We're then going to head back to the capital and defeat the Golden Shade of Godfrey. This boss fight can be a little bit tough, but after you defeat him, you're going to rest at that site of grace and then follow the tree branch up and around. And then as you come out of that room, you're going to go to the left and jump onto the rooftop, head into the open window and up the tree branch, and you are going to snag the Golden Order Principia. The reason we need to get this book is because we need to get the Law of Regression Incantation in order to continue Corrin and Goldmask's quest. You're going to want to take this book to the Church of Vows and give it to the giant dog so you can learn this incantation. 
You can buy the Law of Regression for 10,000 runes, however it is going to take 37 intelligence to use, so if you have not respect in order to use this spell for the questline, you're going to have to respect now at Renala. After you have the appropriate stats, we're going to head back to the Erdtree Sanctuary site of Grace, and you are going to head west from this location on the path that I'm going to show you. We need to find a statue and then use the Law of Regression right in front of it. You'll then go ahead and use Law of Regression, and you will find out that Radagon is actually America, and they are one and the same person. We're then going to stay in Lindell, and we need to find Gold Mask. He will be located right here on the map, and he will be accompanied by Corin. You're going to first talk to Corin and exhaust all of his dialogue, and then you'll have the option to talk to Gold Mask. Tell Gold Mask that Radagon is America, and then you can talk to Corin once more and exhaust the rest of his dialogue. After we've talked to both of them as much as we can, we are then going to take a trip back from where we came to the East Capital Rampart site of Grace, because at this point, Bach the Seamster will be at this location. When you begin a conversation with him, Bach is going to have a few different dialogue options, so I'll explain what each one is. The first one, he is going to ask if he can call you Lord. I went ahead and said yes to this, and he will then call you Lord in each one of his greetings, and you will also get the Lord emote. When you answer the did you see it, he's going to talk about the Erd Tree and how beautiful it is, and then finally, the one that matters the most here is you ask him has he ever thought, and he is going to talk about Renala and the ability to be reborn. You can go through his entire dialogue, and he will mention that he might want to be reborn, and you have the opportunity to give him a larval tier. So at this point, you're going to have two options within Box Quest. Option number one is you can use the prattling plate, your beautiful mask that you can find right here on the map right in front of Bach, and then you can talk to him again and tell him that you heard a voice, and he will be very glad that his mother has told him that he's beautiful. Now, option number two is you give him this larval tear. He then will be found in Raya Lucaria Academy right next to Renala, and he will be a human. However, after you reload the area again, he will die, but he will have been reborn. So, the choice is yours. In my instance, however, we are going to use the Your Beautiful Mask. That way, he will live, and he can continue to alter our clothing as long as possible. After you use the mask on Bach, you're then going to have the I Heard the Voice option in his dialogue. Exhaust everything, and then tell him that yes, he is beautiful, and he will be extremely elated, and after that, he will stick around forever and be able to alter your garments wherever possible. It's now time to go defeat Morgoth. He is one of the more difficult bosses in the game, and currently as I'm fighting him, I'm level 132 with a strength build, and you are going to have to be a little bit patient with yourself because it is going to take a few attempts. If you do want to know what he's weak against, he is weak to slash damage and lightning, and has a stronger resistance to holy and sleep. But overall, this is a very fun fight, and after you defeat him, we are going to go and find Hyetta. But before we do that, we need to sit at the site of Grace and talk to Melina, and she's going to give us the rolled medallion. We're going to need this to traverse, continuing through the lands between, and now we are going to go locate Hyetta. To find her, we're going to have to head to the underground roadside site of Grace, and there is a very long and arduous journey ahead of us. We need to make our way all the way through the sewers, but I'm going to go ahead and leave the route right here on the screen for you, so you can see exactly where to go. This first sped up route is going to be to unlock the shortcut in order to get to our second route we need to take, which is going to take us all the way down deeper underground till we fight the Omen of Moog. And this second route that you're seeing now is going to take us to the Forsaken Depths site of Grace.
Now in order to get to Hyeta, we need to actually kill the Omen Moog, which is straight through these doors you're seeing in front of us. After you kill him, you can rest at his side of grace and hit the altar behind that chest that has the Erdtree's favor in it, and you can then make your way into the next area. There's going to be one killer of a jumping puzzle here, so my best advice to you here is just be careful and look before you jump. And after you get all the way down to the bottom, Hyeta will be sitting there right next to the wall. You will have the option to do the Flame of Frenzied ending if you meet with the three fingers behind this giant door. However, that will lock you out of any other ending, so that is completely up to you. If you do commune with the three fingers after talking with Hyeta, you can come back and receive the Flame of Frenzied seal. But we are not going to be doing the Flame of Frenzied ending here, so we will just talk to Hyeta right here, and that will be where her quest line stops. We're now going to pick up with a quest line that we left behind long ago. You're going to head to the Godric the Grafted Site of Grace in Stormvale Castle, and we are going to see a familiar face. We're going to be able to talk to Defeli as well as Kenneth Height and Gestalk. It is important, however, that when you get to the Site of Grace, you need to rest at the Godric the Grafted Site of Grace once more, and then you should be able to run up the stairs and into the double doors where all three of them will be. You can exhaust all of Nefeli's dialogue, and eventually she will give you an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. And then you can head over to Kenneth Height, and he will raise your title to Knighthood, just like he promised at the beginning of the game. You can also go over to Gestok, and he will have an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone as well. At this point, we need to head to the mountaintops of the Giants. You're going to start at the Avenue Balcony side of Grace, and you're going to run through the capital until you get to some giant double doors. Run through those and make your way all the way through until you get to the Forbidden Lands side of Grace after you take the lift down. You're going to run through the entire Forbidden Lands, make your way to the next area, which is the Grand Lift of Rold. Take that lift to the top, and it will dump you out right here at the Zamor Ruin site of Grace, which is going to enter you into the mountaintops of the Giants. The goal here is to get all the way to this Volcano Manor request to kill Juno Hoslo, so we can continue with the Volcano Manor questline. However, on your way, you are going to get to the ancient Snow Valley Ruins, and you are going to run into Millicent. You can go ahead and exhaust all of her dialogue. The next place you're going to find her is going to be in the Halig Tree, because she's going to start talking about it here, as that's the next place she's going to be. She tells you the Halig Tree is hidden somewhere in the Northlands, but we're not going to deal with that yet, as we're on our way to kill Juno. You'll find Juno's summoning sign here on the ground, and you can go ahead and invade his world. After Juno's defeat, we then need to go find Corrin and Goldmask at a bridge south of the Stargazer's Ruins, right here on the map. Now, as I was exhausting Corrin's dialogue, I did have the option to give him the Tonic of Forgetfulness. However, you don't want to do that because although he will take the Tonic, Goldmask will leave him right here and we will not get to the final part of his questline in the Ashen Capital. So don't even worry about that and go ahead and leave the conversation so we can move on to Volcano Manor and exhaust all of Tanith's dialogue. Upon returning to Tanith, she's going to reward you with the Taker's cameo, and then you can continue to exhaust her dialogue, and she will ask you if you're ready to see Rykard. Go ahead and choose the See the Lord option, and you're going to go kill Rykard to continue the Volcano Manor questline. Rykard is definitely one of the coolest fights in the entire game, so definitely enjoy it, but after you kill him, you're going to rest at the site of Grace, and then you're going to head back to Volcano Manor to tie up some loose ends with Burnall, and then we're going to head back to Zariah and exhaust her dialogue as well. After exhausting her dialogue, you'll have the option to give her the Tonic of Forgetfulness, don't do that, leave the area and reset at the site of Grace, run back, and then waiting for you will be her letter, as well as the data card's woe. And at this point, her questline is 100% complete. We'll then make our way back into Volcano Manor and exhaust all of Patch's dialogue. He'll be excited that you killed Rykard, but he says his time at the manor is over, and the next place we are going to go and find him is going to be the Shaded Castle. Make your way through that castle, and right before you reach Elmer the Briar, he's going to be laying against some statues on the left side of the bridge. After exhausting all of his dialogue on the bridge, you are going to receive the Dancer's Castanets that you need to go and give to Tanith. Continue to exhaust all of his dialogue to make sure he moves on to his next location, and then you're going to travel all the way back to Volcano Manor, where we're going to exhaust all of Tanith's dialogue, and she will have figured out that we have killed Rykard, and then we can go ahead and rest at the site of Grace, and she will have disappeared. You're then going to travel to where Rykard was at the Rykard Lord of Blasphemy site of Grace, where you will find Tanith eating the head of Rykard. You need to go ahead and talk to her and give her the castanets, she will tell you that she has no need of it, and then you will go ahead and kill her. Once you kill her, her knight will be summoned and he will invade your world, and you have to kill him as well. You can then rest at the site of Grace and pick up the item that Tanith has left behind, which is going to be the Consort's Mask, Consort's Robe, and the Consort's Trousers. 
At this point, we are going to head back to where it all began with Patches, to Murkwater Cave in Limgrave, and fight him one last time. You're going to see a very similar story unravel within this cave, similar to the very first time you met him. You're going to hit him one time, and then he's going to realize that it's you, and he's going to ask you to stop fighting. Go ahead and stop fighting him, walk up to him and wait for him to give you the crouch gesture, and at which point you can exhaust all of his dialogue. After you've exhausted all of his dialogue, rest at the site of Grace, and then you can come back to him and he will have opened up shop once again in Murkwater Cave. Give yourself a pat on the back because Patch's questline is officially done. We're now going to venture back to the mountaintops of the Giants, where we need to go all the way through Castle Soul and get the Halig Tree Medallion left, so then we will be able to enter the Halig Tree. The medallion will be located at the very end of the castle after you defeat Commander Nile, who is a pretty challenging fight, but also incredibly fun. After receiving the Halig Tree Medallion left that's on the top of the tower at the end of Castle Soul, we are going to play a little bit of cleanup. We need to do a few things in order to progress some quest lines even farther, and that is find every single death route, as well as find all five seedbed curses. We've already found one seedbed curse, but four remain, so we're going to go ahead and locate two of those right now. The first one we're going to go to is going to be located right outside the West Capital Rampart site of Grace, and I want you to follow the route that I'm taking into the old Roundtable Hold. I'll go ahead and stop talking for a second just so you guys can find the route, and then after we find the seedbed curse, we're going to head back to Volcano Manor to find the next one. The next seedbed curse we need to find is going to be at the Temple Aigle site of Grace, and you're going to follow the route that I'm showing you here. You will need two stone sword keys for this route, so just keep that in mind, but I'll go ahead and let you watch the route, and then I'll come back later. Now, considering the last two of these seedbed curses are in the Halig Tree, we're going to put a pause on this for now and go gather every single death route that we can. The first one, which we've already attained, is from Summonwater Village in Limgrave right here on the map. And the second one you're going to want to go grab is within the Death Touch Catacombs in Limgrave as well. After the Death Touch Catacombs is done, you need to go to this location on the map and kill the Undead Mariner to get your third death route. And at which point you need to continue to go north into the Black Knife Catacombs to get yet another death route. After receiving four death route in total, you need to go back to Garonk because we're going to turn in these four to him. You're going to get a few incantations and then you can rest at that site of grace, but Garong will then attack you once you are done resting. You can go ahead and hit him a few times, don't kill him, but after you hit him, he will then plead for you to stop, rest at the site of grace once more, and then he will have reset and we can continue to get the rest of the death route. We're then going to head up to the Wyndham Ruins where there's going to be an undead mariner somewhere around here located on the map. I've already killed him but he should be around right here so you guys can kill him and then grab the death route and move on to your next location. We're then going to head to the primeval sorcerer Azura's site of grace because we need to enter the Gelmir Hero's grave. You're going to run all the way down the lava to the very bottom and on the right you're going to jump in a small hole. This will drop you off directly in front of the boss room, and then you need to kill the Red Wolf Champion within and grab the chest at the very end holding a death root. We're then going to head to this location in the mountaintops of the Giants because there's going to be another Mariner here. If you've already killed this guy, that's totally fine. I just want to make sure that everyone gets every death root possible for this quest line. After you kill the Mariner, you will be rewarded with the Halfen Steeple as well as a Death Root. Now, our second to last Death Root is going to be located in the mountaintops of the Giants as well. However, it is going to be in the Giants Mountaintops Catacombs located right here on the map. You need to make your way through this entire dungeon. At the very end, there's going to be an ulcerated tree spirit. After you kill the tree spirit, then there will be a death root in a chest at the very end. Now, our last death root is going to be on the way to where we need to go to get to the Halig Tree. We're going to go to the Grand Lift of Rold, but we need to use the secret medallion. So you're going to go onto that lift, but then you're going to cycle to the secret medallion prompt 
and that's going to allow you to go into the hidden Hallertree path. This place can be absolutely ridiculous to get through, but once you get through, you're going to pull the lever and run through the double doors, and you're going to end up fighting a mimic here. If you want a good strategy for this, take off all of your gear, and then the mimic will have nothing on, and you can just absolutely slap the mimic with whatever weapon you're using. After you kill the mimic here, go to the chest, and you will get your last death root. Once we've gotten our last death root, we're going to head back to the Beastal Sanctum in Kaled and give all of our death root to Garonk. Upon turning in all the death root, you'll get an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone, Garonk's Beast Claw, the Beast Claw Hammer, and the Stone of Garonk. And at this point, Garonk's questline is 100% done. At this point, you're going to head back to the hidden path of the Hallig Tree site of Grace, and you are going to make your way through the entire Consecrated Snowfields. There are a few things that we need to do here, but first and foremost, we need to go ahead and open up the path to the Hallig Tree. In order to do so, you need to go to the Ordina Liturgical Town, and you need to make your way through there to the Everjail. Once you get to the Everjail, you're going to need to light these brazers that you see me lighting here on the screen. There's four in total, and then after that, the Hallig Tree portal is going to be opened. Once we open that Hallig Tree portal, we're then going to head over here to this church, and we are going to drop off Latena. It should also be noted here that if you have not killed Anastasia the Tarnished Eater, you need to do so, or you will not be able to summon Latena at this location. You'll let Latena talk to her sister for a bit, and then you will get an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. Exhaust all of her dialogue, and she agrees to stay with you until the very, very end, and as of right now, her quest is completely finished. Lastly, we need to go down to this area right here in the Consecrated Snowfields on the west side, and we need to go through the portal that's going to take us to Moog's Palace. Note that you do need to kill the Seguin Noble Invader here, here or you will not be able to activate the portal. We need to complete Varus's questline, and this is the place we're going to do it. Once on the other side of the portal, you're going to follow the cave entrance through, and you will come out right here at Mogwin Palace. Now besides killing Moog, there's actually two other reasons we need to be in Mogwin Palace, the first of which is we're going to kill the three invaders at the Blood Swamp located right here on the map. I will show you all three areas where they spawn, and then we're going to kill each and every one of them. After you kill the third one, you are going to receive the White Mask, and then we can go head up to the Mausoleum Dynasty Midpoint site of Grace. Also, as I'm editing this, I wasn't sure why the summoning sign wasn't showing up for me, so I went back to Vare and talked to him, and he actually gave me the item I needed in order to complete that portion of his questline, and then come back to this point and go ahead and find the summon sign located right here on the ground. You're going to go ahead and invade Varus' world through the summon sign, and once you get in there, it's going to be rather dark, so you need to search around for him. After you find him, you need to kill him, and then you will be teleported back to your own world. Don't go anywhere, though, because Vare will be laying down on the ground, and you need to exhaust all of his dialogue. Once his dialogue is finished, he will die, and you can pick up Vara's bouquet, as well as six festering fingers. And at this point, Vara's questline is done. At this point, we're kind of going to go on a boss-killing spree. We're first going to go and fight the Fire Giant in order to progress the game. If you want to, you can stay where we are and defeat Moog, and then go to the Fire Giant. But I'm going to go ahead and kill the Fire Giant so that the world will change and we can continue all the quest lines we've been doing. Now, as we approach the Fire Giant, you will have the option to summon Alexander right here on the ground. You don't have to summon him here. I believe it's an option, but I like to summon him. He's a huge help on this fight, and I enjoy the fact that we get to fight with him one last time. So once the Fire Giant is defeated, you need to make your way up to the Great Forge. Here we're going to talk to Melina, and then we will start to burn the Erd Tree. In order to get this to happen, you need to sit at the site of Grace, and you will have the option to speak to Melina. Go through all of her dialogue and watch the cutscene, and you will begin to burn the Erd Tree. Once you wake up, you will find yourself within Fair Missoula, and you can go ahead and rest at the first site of Grace, but we're actually going to head out and go kill Mog and Melania. The reason we need to do this is because after we kill Mog and Melania, we will be able to go back to Gideon and tell them about their locations and their deaths. We'll get a little bit of dialogue from Gideon, which is kind of cool, and then we're going to go back to the Hallig Tree and continue Millicent's questline. But back to the fight at hand. For the Moog fight, you need to make sure you have the Purifying Crystal tier in your flask, or in his second phase, you are going to get absolutely wrecked. He is a very, very challenging fight. I'm currently level 138 when I'm fighting him, so definitely a difficult one. But after you get him down, we're then going to head back to Ordina Liturgical Town all the way up in the Consecrated Snowfields, and we're going to take the portal to get to the Hallig Tree. So we're going to do a few things here in the Hallig Tree. First and foremost, we're going to go all the way through until we get to the Prayer Room Site of Grace. Kill all the bosses you want, kill all the enemies you want, until you get to the prayer room site of Grace, where we're going to find Millicent. 
We're going to exhaust all of her dialogue here, and she's going to talk about how she's a part of Melania. We will then go find the two remaining seedbed curses that are located in the Halig tree as well, and lastly, we will kill Melania. But let's go ahead and start with the first seedbed curse within the Halig tree. You're going to run from the prayer room site of Grace following the route that I'm going to show you, jump over and do a little bit of parkour by Clean Rot Knight Finley's Ashes, and then you're going to jump up this embankment and go up to the very top, finding your fourth seedbed curse. If you backtrack just a little bit into this room on the right, you're also going to find a somber ancient dragon smithing stone. Now for our last seedbed curse, you are going to start at the prayer room site of Grace again, except this time you're going to make your way forward and then go down the stairs, almost until you get to the room where there's two clean rot knights. Jump over the ledge onto the pillar, then jump down into a secret room. Within that room on the right side is going to be a dead person in a chair, and that's where you're going to find your seedbed curse. At this point, you need to make your way through the rest of the Halig tree until you can engage Melania. After you kill Melania, we need to take a trip back to Roundtable Hold, because Gideon is going to want to know about the death and locations of Moog and Melania. Exhaust all the dialogue options you can with him. I happened to get a bunch of different incantations from him, which was kind of cool, but go through and exhaust every single dialogue option with him until you can't talk to him anymore. You're then going to make your way to the underground roadside site of Grace and head through the subterranean shunning grounds to find the Dung Eater. Once we get to the Dung Eater, we're going to give him all five seedbed curses. You will get some extended dialogue with him, and then after that, you will receive the Mending Rune of the Fell Curse. And after you have done this, Dung Eater's quest is officially complete. At this point, we're going to head back to the Halig Tree and assist Millicent with the remainder of her quest line. You're going to have to go to the Drainage Channel site of Grace, and you're going to make your way backwards a little bit until you get to the Scarlet Rot Pool, where there's going to be an ulcerated tree spirit. You need to kill that tree spirit and then find the two summoning signs on the ground. The yellow summoning sign will be to help Millicent, and the red summoning sign will be to betray Millicent. If you help Millicent, you are going to be rewarded with the Rotwing Sword Insignia, but if you assist her sisters, you will be rewarded with Millicent's Prosthesis. Because we're trying to complete every single quest line in the way it was intended to be completed, we're going to go ahead and use the Yellow Summoning Sign and assist Millicent in destroying her sisters. Once you return to your world, you will have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia. You'll need to go over to the other side of the area where Millicent is going to be laying on the ground. You can exhaust all of her dialogue and she will tell you that she has taken out the Golden Needle. After you've exhausted all of her dialogue, rest at the site of Grace, come back, and you'll find Millicent's corpse, but on her corpse will be the Unalloyed Golden Needle. You'll then take the Unalloyed Golden Needle and go back into Melania's arena. Interact with the giant flower there, interact with the flower using the gold needle, and you will receive an Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone as well as Mikola's Needle. And then we can make our way back to Kaled to Gowry's Shack. We need to go and exhaust all of Gallery's dialogue, kill him, and then loot everything that he has. And with this, Millicent's questline is 100% complete. You're now going to go into Jarberg, and if everything looks the same, go ahead and reload the area once more, and after you reload the area, you will find that Jarbaran is gone. You will also find that there is a ton of carnage within the town, and Jarbaran has actually moved into the outside of the center of the town. He'll tell you that Dialis has fought the poacher, but Dialis is laying in the middle of the field, not looking so great. Exhaust all of Jarbaran's dialogue, and then run over to Dialos. While talking to Dialos, you'll have the opportunity to tell him whether or not he defended the town or not. You can either lie to him or tell him the truth, whichever one you would like. I'm going to go ahead and say you defended them, and then you can exhaust the rest of his dialogue. Dialos will die, and then you can reload at the site of Grace and Jarberg, and head back to where Dialos was, and you will find Jarbaran right next to him. Exhaust his dialogue and reload the area once more, and this time around where Dialos was will be a Newman's Rune, his pedal whip, and his mask. You can then go find Jarbaran in his normal spot and exhaust all of his dialogue. And now, finally, we are going to make our way back to Crumbling Faramazula. You're going to make your way through this entire area like normal, defeating bosses, getting items, doing whatever you want to do here. But we do need to go have our final confrontation with Burnall, which is going to be located right here on the map. Burnall is a very fun but a little bit intense fight when it comes to your NPC fights, so proceed with caution, but after defeating Burnall, you'll get the Blasphemous Claw, the Devourer's Scepter, and the entire Beast Champion armor. We're then gonna go up and have our final confrontation with Alexander. I have an entire questline for Alexander, so if you want to know the exact route, I'll go ahead and share that in the description down below. 
But if you want to know exactly where he is, you're going to go to this location right here on the map and then follow the route that I'm showing you sped up and you will run directly into Alexander. You'll talk to Alexander, exhaust all of his dialogue, and then proceed to fight him, killing him, gathering the shard of Alexander as well as Alexander's innards. There's only a handful of things we have to do left in order for all of the quest lines in Elden Ring to be completed. So while we're here in Crumbling Fair Missoula, we need to go and defeat Malekith. The reason being is that Malekith allows the Rune of Dest and Death to be let back into the world, and it will shift the face of the capital, meaning we'll then be able to get to the Lindell capital of Ash, where Corrin and Goldmask are both going to be. The Malekith fight, in my opinion, is probably the most difficult fight for me personally, but it is definitely very rewarding to kill him, and the only advice I have for this boss in all the hours that I have played is just learn his moveset and get good. After getting to Lindell capital of Ash, run south towards the spiral staircase, and you're going to find Corrin on his knees in a really bad mental state. Exhaust all of his dialogue, and then we're going to go and find Goldmask. From Corrin's location, you're going to head southwest towards the spiral staircase, but don't go up it, go to the side. You're going to go down into this little valley, and there's going to be a log that's acting as a bridge. Jump over the bridge and go up to the left, and you're going to find Gold Mask laying up against a wall. There you're going to receive the Mending Rune of Perfect Order, and this is where Gold Mask and Corrin's quest 100% end. You can then rest at the site of Grace and run back to these exact locations and pick up the Gold Mask rags as well as Corrin's garb as well. We're now going to head back to Jarburg one last time because we need to give Alexander's innards to Jar Baran. Once we give Jar Baran Alexander's innards, we can reload the area and come back to where Jar Baran was sitting, and there will be the companion Jar Talisman in his spot. Oh. And that's it. That is every single quest line in order, the most proficient way to do everything in all of Elden Ring. Guys, if you are still watching at this end of the video, thank you. Thank you a ton. This has been weeks and weeks and weeks of work. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. This is my biggest video that I have ever done, and I really, really hope that it helps some people and that you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Also hit the bell notification. Shadow of the Erd Tree is just around the corner, so I'm incredibly excited about that. We have a link to the Discord down below if you want to go check that out. I'm super excited that this video is done because I worked super hard on it, and I'm really proud of it. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate it, and until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.